welcome back to D-Lab. Still working on that Heathkit DX100 transmitter. I've got the grid drive repaired. Now we need to repair the 5R4 rectifier tube socket flashover issue. This is a common problem with a lot of these older transmitters because what happens is you get the contaminants that fall down onto the chassis. It gathers around the tube the high voltage says, hey, I see a path to ground. They arc. you got a problem. I'm going to show you how to fix it. So here are the tube sockets for the 5R4 rectifiers on the DX100. If you look over here, the one that says 13, you can see a little black mark right there. And what that is, is a flashover from that terminal to chassis. So if you take a look at this pattern, you can see that the socket is very close to the chassis. Get a little bit of contamination in there, she'll arc, and now you've got a serious problem. Because this can damage your high voltage transformer. Let me show you a very cost effective way to fix it. So here's the DX100 transmitter that you've seen me working on here the last couple days. Now in this position down here, you would normally see a pair of these 5R4 rectifiers for the high voltage. I actually removed them because I was working on some of the low voltage circuits and I did not want to expose myself to high voltage DC. But when I did that, I noticed over here there was an arc on that pin to ground. That's very bad news. Luckily I pulled the tubes or I might not have seen this and powered up the transmitter and damaged it. So after evaluating this issue I came up with a pretty easy solution. Instead of trying to clean the terminal and hope that it won't arc over again I decided the best approach is to put an insulator between the socket and the chassis. So I found some nylon and I use a green lead punch. I punched the center hole here as you can see and then we have the hole pattern for the tube sockets. So I will install these between the socket and the chassis, spacing the socket down, providing insulation, and it should never arc again. Installation should be pretty easy. I'll pretty much just remove the mounting screws, lower the socket, of course clean this mess up, slide in the insulator, reinstall the socket. So the socket is retracted. I got my insulator in there. Just going to slide it in place, put the screws back in. Well, there you go. Nylon insulator is installed. What's nice about these type of insulators is they totally surround the socket. So the socket's not going to sit there and rock back and forth. It's a much more secure insulated method. So as you can see, it's a pretty tight fit. So you want to make sure when you put those holes in your new nylon insulators that they clear the base of the 5R4 rectifiers. Alright, moment of truth. I've got the rig fired up. She's been warming up for a little bit. In my last video, I repaired the grid. That appears to still be working, thank God. Alright, so now we're going to go to plate. We'll key it up with a plate switch and dip our amplifier. There she goes. We're on 40 meters. I got about 110 watts. Good sign. Let's go to phone. Now in my previous video you saw that I installed push to talk. So I have my D104 microphone hooked up. Let's see if it'll actually modulate. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? So now I can key it with a microphone. So we're in AM. Let's bring up some modulation. Oh yeah, she's talking. This is a unamplified D104 mic. Plenty of audio. I can hear myself out of the tubes. That's a good sign. And look at that forward modulation on the watt meter. The DX100 is working. Alright, well good news for the DX100 transmitter. She's really coming along. I still want to go through this thing, check resistors, change out the old caps, 
because she's all original. But the good thing is now is the high voltage is working and it's safe. It's not going to arc and damage the radio. If you have one of these DX100s, take a good look at those sockets on the 5R4s. And if you see any arcing, get some insulators in there or you're going to have problems. See you again.